Hi there everyone, my name is Dave West. I hope we're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test. And today I'm checking out the iPhone 14 Plus, but with its high dynamic range of video option enabled. Now compared to the standard dynamic range, which I recorded earlier on, there is a difference from the selfie camera, although it is still disappointingly a bit too dark to be considered usable video. Now I do admit the conditions are slightly more challenging than maybe a well-lit city street or something, but I still expected this to do a lot better than what it has done here this evening. Now the selfie camera can record up to 4K at 60 using the high dynamic range option. We've not used the 60 frames per second because it looks like this. And in my view, it is almost unusable for any kind of video application. But I just wanted to include it as part of the test just to show you how it looks. Because I'll inevitably get asked in the comments if I'd recorded at 4K 60 from the selfie in the high dynamic range option. So moving to the rear cameras then. So both of the rear cameras can record in high dynamic range at up to 60 frames per second. So this is 4K 30 frames per second from the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Now, as I said, in the standard dynamic range test, this is an old sensor by iPhone standards. Now this has been used in the 11, 12 and 13 series and is really starting to show its age, especially in this kind of application. Uh, because even with the high dynamic range option enabled, it's just not able to pull in enough light or do enough with the video to make it that usable in these kind of conditions. But if I switch to the main camera, you can see that it looks much better. Uh, because this is a much newer sensor, this has been brought over from the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. and gets all the benefits of the sensor shift technology and also just being a better sensor. It's more modern and you can see here it drags in a lot of light and looks great with the high dynamic range toggle switched on. Now one good thing is that even though the colours and the brightness are really pumped up, it gives you a much better sense of you know, what your eyes would normally see. And I haven't gone too mad on the colours. I tested the Galaxy Z Fold 4 earlier and everything was a bit luminous. But this is actually looking pretty good. And if I just stand still, Things like moving cars are all rendered really nicely. There's no stutters or jitters with the image and even street lighting actually looks pretty good. So that's a start. Years back it was just like this mess of light hitting the camera but everything does look a lot more evenly exposed across the board now which is good. So for the sake of completeness, I'm bound to be asked, this is 4K60 using the ultra wide angle camera in HDR. Um, you can see it's looking really poor, um, but it's, it's not an ultimate video test without trying every mode in the conditions that we're in. And here's the, the main 12 megapixel camera at 4K 60. Now this is with the auto frames per, se per second, sorry, I lost my words there. The auto frames per second option toggled off. So this is actually 4K 60 with the ultra wide camera. Now, I've been asked in other videos for the iPhone whether it's using a dynamic frame rate. It does. So whilst it's smooth video, it's still, I think, using a dynamic frame rate to get you this noticeably brighter video than if you were using 4K60 on another handset. I have seen lots of crushed images when using 4K60. But things are improving as the years roll on. Now we've got some light flow you can see there some dots in the bottom left hand corner of the image but that's to be expected there's quite a lot of light around with such a small sensor but you let me know what you think of the video in high dynamic range using both of the rear cameras and for those wondering you can use the action mode in lower light but you do have to go into the settings and tog toggle on an enhanced mode for the action mode which allows in more light when using this mode. Now it's only really usable 
at the 30 frames per second option and it's still not brilliant or ideal but I wanted to include it in this section just to show you how the action mode works using just the main camera the ultra wide camera looks pretty pants as you can see here in daylight it looks excellent it records at up to 2.8k at 60 frames per second so not quite the 4k 60 you get with the 14 pro and pro max but nonetheless this is how it looks at night time uh, back to the main camera i suppose the hdr is also helping as well just lifts up the overall brightness across the whole image but you let me know what you think down in the comments all right so that's the end then of the iphone 14 plus video test with the high dynamic range option enabled so finishing off the test with the main rear camera just to see or show you rather how it looks with human faces in darker conditions now if you've got any comments or questions about anything you've seen in the video then please do leave those down in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and don't forget if you're new around here then please do consider subscribing so there's more videos like this coming on the channel very very soon but for now this has been my video test for the iphone 14 plus using its high dynamic range option my name is dave west and i'll catch you guys later